So I'm going to talk about the, a little bit of the history of Fedora websites and uh, how we got to where we are today. And then kind of end by putting out a huge call for help uh, because we really need help on the websites team right now. Um, so just out of curiosity, was anybody in your part of the project when this was the landing site for Fedora? Does anybody remember this? Cool. Um, yeah, so this was actually uh, before Fedora was using its own domain for the, uh, for the website. This was actually fedora.redhat.com uh, back in 2004. So a little bit of history for you. And then, so more recently, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, we switched to this kind of design. There were designs in between there, but um, this is what we were using for, uh, for a number of years. And then uh, today, this is what the landing site of Fedora looks like. So if you go to getfedora.org, this is what you'll see. This is what our users see, our new users who are uh, wanting to download Fedora or get involved. This is the landing site they see. It's uh, simpler than, than the old design. It's, um, you know, it's less, less going on at once. So you can kind of focus in on individual components. And um, yeah. So how did we get there from previous design to what we have today. So uh, mid-2018, uh, we had a volunteer contributor who was kind of leading the Fedora uh, websites team. Uh, his name was Robert Mayer, uh, Roby Duck on IRC. Um, and he was doing this for a number of years, and it got to uh, mid-2018, and he had other commitments come up, which happens, and he was no longer able to uh, devote as much time to maintaining the websites. So around this time, uh, Fedora 29 beta was pending. Uh, it was due in a couple of days, and we had no website prepared, and that was a problem. So a couple of people reached out to me internally, because I had worked on the websites before, um, and they said, hey, like, we're in trouble. We have Fedora 29 beta coming out. We don't have websites. Help. So. I worked, uh, it was the weekend before release, I worked uh, updating the websites, getting everything ready to go. Same kind of thing happened for Fedora 29 Final. We got to the end, you know, the re release was approved, ready to go to GA, and we had no websites. Same kind of deal. So, started noticing a trend here, and uh, a little bit later in that year, uh, kind of had a heart to heart with uh, Jim, who was my manager at the time, and this controller is going crazy. Why are you going to drag me into this? And I explained, you know, you know, originally working on websites was not part of my job description. I was like, you know, I, I enjoy doing this. I've worked on websites before. I'm happy to keep doing it, but I have a, a request, a condition, and that was I really want to redo the tool set that we're using uh, for the websites because, well, I'll go into why. Around the same time, uh, Matt Miller, the Fedora project leader, came to the web team and he had a request. He said, you know, for Fedora 30, we want to redesign Get Fedora. We want to have a new face for Fedora. Um, you know, we, we had uh, had the previous design for five years or so, probably at that point, and it was time for a change, a facelift. Also at that same time, um, when Ryan Lurch from the design team saw that request, he started working on the, uh, the new Git Fedora, the one that we have today. Um, but he also emailed a couple of people, internally and externally, and said, hey, while we're redoing this website, while we're doing the redesign, should we also look at our tooling? Should we like, see if we should switch to different tooling? Um, you know, a different static site generator or whatnot. He wanted to open that discussion. And his email about that, he had no idea that I reached out to, to Jim earlier, and that was a totally independent thing. Like, we, we came to the same conclusion, we need to redo the tooling as a, a, a totally separate um, thing. So I guess great minds think alike. But why? why did, what drew us both to this, this idea? So, the old Fedora websites repository is the Git repository that has uh, all of our websites kind of crammed into it. It has the landing site, gitfedora.org. It also has arm.fedoraproject.org, uh, alt.fedoraproject.org, spins, labs, IoT, all of the Fedora websites 
crammed into one repository. And that has a couple of problems. So first off, the repository is huge. All the static assets for these websites, the images, CSS, JavaScript, these are copied for each and every website. Um, there's a lot of custom code. So uh, in the old websites repository, we were not using a static site framework. We were using Jinja, te Jinja 2 templates and a lot of custom Python code that kind of compiled them all together. You are not using an official framework to do this. Uh, there is a 557 line config file call, uh, called globalvar.py, which gives you some indication of how this is going. Um, and there were a lot of legacy code and hacks that were added in over time. So for a given release, for example, um, there would be a spin or a lab that, that didn't get done in time to go out in GA. So we would have to go into all the templates and comment out just that one spin. Uh, or sometimes we'd have a, a particular release or version that has a, a different uh, download path from all the others. So we'd have to go in and find that just for that one release and then remember to undo that change for the next release. Um, and a lot of those never got undone. So the templates just became a mess of, of all this legacy stuff added over time. So. It was hard for developers to set up and contribute. I mean, just cloning the repository alone takes a significant amount of time because of how big it is. Um, I mean, I, I have fiber at my house now and it still takes several minutes to clone the repository. So uh, Ryan from the design team and I started kind of exploring uh, new static site generators. Um, and we looked at a couple options. The first one we looked at was Hugo, which is written in Golang. And it had some neat ideas. It had this idea of themes where um, you, know, you kind of have a, a set of themes and you reuse them for all the, the subcomponents of the site. Um, but it did a little bit too much. It was trying to be a little too helpful. It had, it had a very specific, specific idea of what a static site should be and how it should be laid out. And we kind of had our own ideas that we wanted to do, and Hugo was kind of getting in the way of, of doing that. Uh, we looked at Jekyll. We looked at Hackle, uh, which is like a Haskell version of Jekyll. We looked at uh, Pelican, which is a, a Python one. Uh, and we also kind of asked, what does the team already know? What do we use? What, are, you know, what is our skill set in Fedora infrastructure and Fedora websites? Um, what, are the, what are the tools that we already know? Um, and, and the one thing is we use Flask, we use Python Flask for all of our modern web apps in Fedora infrastructure. It's kind of something that we've settled on over the last year or two. Um, previously, we were using every framework over the sun, uh, uh, but you know, we're, we're kind of consolidating on one framework now. And a community member said, hey, you guys are familiar with Flask as a team. Like the Fedora project uses Flask for things have you checked out Frozen Flask? And spoiler, spoiler, spoiler alert, that is what we settled on. Um, <coughs> so Frozen Flask is basically you lay out the website as a Flask app. You have all your endpoints and your uh, functions that, that define you know, templates and template variables and whatnot. And then it will go through and it will crawl the site and generate static HTML files from your Flask app. So we tried it and we pretty quickly settled on it. Uh, so a lot of design work with, with uh, Ryan and uh, Mo doing mockups and myself implementing. Uh, a lot of work later, we deployed the new Get Fedora uh, in May of last year. The sad thing is it's still not the one true place you get Fedora, right? So getfedora.org. But we still have alt for alt.fedoraproject.org for the alternate architectures. Uh, we still have arm.fedoraproject.org for arm specific stuff. Uh, we still have spins, they're on their own subdomain. We still have labs. We still have all these other sites that if you don't know, you know where to look for a particular version of Fedora, like, you know, it's, it's hard to find. It's not one umbrella site that has everything on it. And that's kind of what we want to move to. So, um, so we need help. We, we really need help to, to get there. Um, so kind of some goals that we have uh, in the short term, um, maintenance. So people file bug reports, you know, people see typos on the site. 
Um, you know, there's translations that that get updated over time, um, or strings that we forgot to add to the translation system. Uh, every Fedora release and Fedora beta release, um, the website needs to be updated. In the new system with uh, with Frozen Flask, it's really easy. There's one YAML file. It's kind of all self-documented. Um, so you go in, you update a couple variables, and the site is updated. It's, it's pretty nice. Um, in the long term, like I said, we want to merge all the other sites into Get Fedora, so that getfedora.org is the one place to actually get Fedora. Uh, well, I'm giving them time. Um, so also, there's, uh, there's still work that we need to do on the old websites. Until that, until that migration to Get Fedora happens, um, the old websites still need to be maintained until then. So every Fedora release, um, you know, it, it's, it's not fun. It's, there's a lot of tedious work there, like I said, with all the legacy templates and, and whatnot. Um, but as of right now, that still needs to be maintained, and we still need a lot of help doing that. So this is kind of a call for help if anyone is interested in, in helping out on the website scheme. Um, it is highly rewarding, rewarding work. Um, you know, the, the websites are highly visible. Anybody who's interested in Fedora, looks up Fedora, wants to contribute to Fedora, they're going to start at giftfedora.org. It's the landing site. You get to work with really cool people, mostly other volunteers, um, really smart people, really good designers, uh, people who want to see Fedora be successful, and you get to help Fedora be successful. Um, so a couple of resources if you're interested in helping out. We have uh, Fedora websites on Freenode. Uh, that is probably the best place if you have immediate questions or you know, kind of want to introduce yourself or show interest. Uh, that's probably the best place to get started. Uh, we have two really badly named repositories right now. We have uh, pgure.io slash Fedora websites. That is the old repository that has all the websites kind of combined into one repo. Uh, we have the new websites, which is Fedora Web slash websites. Really badly named, but I'm hoping once the uh, once all the other subsites get merged into Get Fedora, we can get rid of the first repository. Um, and we also have a mailing list, and uh, so there's updates to get thrown there sometimes. Uh, you can also feel free to introduce yourself there and kind of say, "Hey, I'm interested. I would like to help out." Uh, you can also contact me directly. I'm, I'm more than happy to uh, kind of help some people get started and kind of show around what we have. Um, like I said, we, we really need help with this. this the, the Fedora websites are what people see when, when they want to get involved in Fedora, when they want to try out Fedora for the first time. Um, and the websites team is really lacking manpower right now. It's something we really, really need help with. So... That's about all I have. I'm happy to take questions, but you know, this is I mostly just wanted to show the migration to the new website, what that looked like, and kind of throw out a call for help because we could really use it. So if there's questions, I'm happy to take them, but otherwise that's good. So apart from your, uh, the fact that Flask was already being used on other apps, why did you end up choosing Frozen Flask compared to some of the other options you looked at? That was, that was really the main reason. Like we had a lot of familiarity with Flask already. We've been using it quite heavily in infrastructure. Um, all the team members were, were pretty familiar with it. The old website's repo was Python. It was a lot of custom code, but it was still Python. Um, so that's why you know, Flask being in Python was an advantage. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the main reason. It's just familiarity. Um, again, we looked at other kind of compared other static site generators. Some of them we could have made work. Some of them were, again, trying to do more, trying to be more helpful than we wanted them to be. But um, yeah, mostly familiar. If I wanted to contribute, is there a containerized version of that where I can test stuff out locally? Is there? Yes, there is. Um, yeah, so there's a, uh, on, on the Fedora documentation website, um, there's a whole walkthrough. It'll help you set up the container. Um, it'll, you know, the, the container image has all the dependencies and everything already there. So just go through the steps. It'll set it up. 
and you can go to the site in your browser, you can make changes and you'll see them right away. All right, thank you.